Hi, this is Pastor Bill Cornelius. I wanna thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe while you're here. And if you enjoyed the message, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, where I'm always posting powerful and inspiring content just like today's message. It is great to see you guys. Thanks so much for being here. I wanna say a quick hello to all of our campuses. Thanks for being a part of our services. Let's also give it up for our God Behind Bars guys. We love you guys. Grateful for you. I'm excited to be talking today about something we all deal with, and that is anxiety. I mean, I think every one of us gets stressed out and worried about the future, about what's going on with our families, about our finances. I mean, there's all kinds of things we get anxious about. You know, there was a guy in the Bible named Paul that was, was also anxious, but he knew to bring it to the Lord. And so, in fact, in, in Scripture, the very first verse we're going to talk about, he wrote from prison. He spent years trying to get to Rome to, to share his faith. He felt like God led him to go there, but then he had all kinds of obstacles. He finally gets to Rome, and he thinks, this is it. I get to finally share what God's put in my heart. And as soon as he gets there, they arrest him. He's thrown in prison, and while he's in prison, he pins these words. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving continually to make your wants known to God. Wow. He's like, God, this isn't what I thought was going to happen. This wasn't what I planned on, but I'm going to trust in you. Would you stand your feet real quick across all of our campuses? Because I think we should start this whole message today about anxiety by casting our cares upon the Lord. And so, you know what? Instead of being up all night worried, why don't you give it to God? He's going to be up all night anyways. So just give it to him. Let's just, let's just pray right now. God, we just lift our concerns to you. Before we even hear this message on anxiety, we want to give you our anxieties. So with your head bowed and your eyes closed across all of our campuses, whatever concerns or worries you have, Whatever thoughts that are making you anxious, just give that to God. He knows the future. He knows what you need. He's aware of your problem. He's aware of what's going on in your family life and your finances and your career. He's aware. He knows about your health issue. You can trust in him. So Lord, we come to you when we give you all of this, Lord. We cast our cares upon you. And we thank you, Lord, that you have it. We begin with you, Lord. We go to you now and we thank you that you have us in the palm of your hand. In your name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Isn't it good? Don't you already feel better? Just knowing God has it all? It's so great to know that, isn't it? Hey, do me a favor, plot your notes if you would, and if you don't have it yet, download our new Church Unlimited app where you can get the notes immediately. Just click on it uh, on notes, and there they pop up, and you can even follow along and fill in the blanks and save it to your phone. So I want to encourage you to get that Church Unlimited app. Is at the Apple Store or the Android Store. Those of you who are still in the Android world, it is 2019. I want to encourage you to come on over. <laughs> It's okay, you can do that. I know it's a little more expensive, but you know, I'm just messing with you. Anyways, yeah, but either way, I want to encourage you to get the app and uh, you can get the, uh, the notes. Anytime you want them, they're right there. It's a lot easier if you're like, I'm trying to write everything down. Well, it's already actually written down for you. And so you can have those and you can just add to it if you want thoughts that you have, things like that. So, so please get those notes and get the app today. I want to encourage you to do that. Today's message is called Overcoming Anxiety because I think all of us deal with anxiety in our lives. We, we find ourselves anxious uh, for more in our lives, anxious for, for solutions, anxious for fixing struggles. And so oftentimes we are consumed with worry and anxiety. But the scripture says there's another way to live. And so the apostle Paul's on to something when he said, cast your cares, give all your worries, give all your concerns to God, give your wants, bring your desires to him, that he's got it. I want to show you another verse on this as well. First Peter 5, verses 5. This is a great verse. It says, in the same way, you who are younger, okay, we just talked to everyone young, so uh, just my wife's in the auditorium today, so they're talking about us, the younger people, yeah. So it says, you who are younger, I love this. So he's, he's speaking very specifically because he knows oftentimes young people are anxious. They're desiring like, what, when is my opportunity gonna come? When, when am I gonna get the raise or the promotion? When am I gonna get my shot? When am I gonna finally get to do what I wanna do? So oftentimes young people are anxious. This is what he says. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders and all of you who uh, should dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time, he will lift you up. Oh, well, look at that. One of the things we're anxious about, we're trying to make it happen in our life. Like, you know, I'm still single and I'm just gonna go find someone now. I'm just gonna finally get married. You can rush that if you want, but that may not go like you think. 
There's a process to everything, isn't there? And so we want to rush it. So he says, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God because he cares about you. So God cares enough about you to not give you what you want right when you want it, but to give you what you want right when you are ready for it. And so God is a loving God that he doesn't give us more than we can handle. So oftentimes we think we're ready when we're not. Can I tell you that all the good things that you want in life, they just take a little time. There's a process to it. So rather than rushing it, let's rush to the presence of God to become who we need to be so that he can give us all that he has for us. First thing I want to encourage you to do is this, number one, to surrender your life to God. Surrender the timing of things, surrender the way things are going to happen, because I can tell you right now that the way you're thinking it's going to happen probably won't be that way. Life just tends to throw curveballs at you, and things change, and things go differently than you thought, and so expectations don't always get met, and that leads to stress, at least anxiety. But God has a better way, and so I want to encourage you to just, just surrender it to the Lord. Hey, how many of you guys have kids that you worry about? Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? You worry about your kids, right? I think we all do to some degree. Uh, I want to encourage you to give your children to the Lord as well. Just trust him with them. And so I encourage you to say, God, I'm, I'm going to trust my kids in your hands. In fact, parents, if that's an issue for you, we've got a new resource here. I just want to mention this. My, my media team put this together. I'm really excited about this. You can go to our website right now. And you can click on prayer guide and you can pray over your kids certain verses. And so we just have it all listed out for you. I encourage you to go to our website, check that out. There's a lot of resources on our website anyways, but I want to encourage you to get that prayer guide. You can print it out and just pray over your kids with that. Just when you're worried about your kids, pray for them instead of worrying about them. There's nothing more effective than a mama's prayer. I'm telling you, that is one effective prayer. And so my mom prayed over me growing up. It was a game changer. And so you had the opportunity to do that as well, moms, dads as well. But I want to encourage you uh, to surrender your life to God. Surrender your children over to God. Say, God, I just trust you with them, but then pray for them. It's a great thing to do. And so replace worry with worship and, and concern with prayer. And so I encourage you to do that. Here's the other thing, too. If you want to quit being anxious all the time, this is another big one. Fill your mind with good things. Fill your mind with with good things. Oftentimes we, we, we find ourselves thinking about things that, that fill us with anxiousness more than good things. Look at Philippians chapter four, it says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, keep your thoughts on whatever is right or deserves praise. Things that are true, honorable, pure, uh, excuse me, fair, pure, acceptable, or commendable. Practice what you've learned and received from me, what you heard and saw me do. Then the God who gives this peace will be with you. So we gotta fill our minds with good things. Oftentimes we're anxious because we're filling our minds with things that make us anxious rather than good things. What you fill yourself with really matters. I heard about this guy, he was anxious and he read an article that said, the way to achieve inner peace is to finish all the things you've started. So he looked around the house and thought, what have I, start, what have I started I didn't finish? And so he said, before leaving the house this morning, I finished a bottle of red wine, white wine, Bailey's, Kahlua, and wild turkey, <laughs> threw in some Prozac and Valium, and he said, I feel amazing. <laughs> So we're actually not talking about filling your body with things like that. Instead, fill your mind with the good things of God. That's what God wants for you. Instead, I want to encourage you to do that. So fill your mind with the things of God. Hey, by the way, next week, we're continuing the series, but next week is all about life struggles. Like maybe there's something you say, well, the reason I am anxious is because there's a real issue that's not going away, Pastor. It's not just me being anxious, but I have a real problem and I just, I can't seem to fix it. Next week is all about how to overcome life's problems. In fact, we're going to teach you a simple principle, always works really does. Doesn't mean it's always the exact you know, uh, result you want, but it always is effective. And so I want to challenge you to be here for that as we talk about how you can overcome life struggles. Simple principle always works. I promise you. Come, be here next week. Bring your friends, bring your family. It works. We're going to help you overcome that struggle, whatever it may be. And so be sure to be here for that. So I want to just stop real quick and just say I, I may invite our police officers in today because they need to write tickets to every one of us for disturbing the peace. We keep disturbing our own peace. Let me ask you this. What are you watching or who are you listening to that's disturbing your peace? Oftentimes, we don't even realize it, but what we watch, what we listen to, what we're following, we're disturbing the own, our own peace that we could have. So not only do we need to fill our minds with good things, would you write this down, number three? We need to limit negative sky is falling media and people. There are certain channels that I will not mention that will scare you senseless if you watch them all the time. They're always telling you about how the world's falling apart, everything's going to whatever, you know what I mean? It's just like everything's falling apart, it's all bad. I wanna really warn you this, we're entering into political season, and so I wanna warn you on both sides of the aisle not to listen to fear tactics. That they just try to scare you, that you gotta vote for me or the world's gonna fall apart. 
It's like, that's a pretty good sign I shouldn't vote for you if you're trying to scare me to death. And so I just want to encourage you with that. Again, I'm not trying to pick on, pick on any particular side, but there really is a lot of doomsday politicians. Everything's going to fall apart. You got to vote for me. And the, which, first of all, the arrogance are like, oh, so the whole world's crumbling, but you're the Savior. I'm pretty sure the Savior already came, and his name is Jesus. So let's trust in him and let him guide us. So your vote counts, your vote matters, you should vote, but just know that at the end of the day, politicians aren't to be fully trusted. Jesus is to be fully trusted. And so I just want to encourage you with that. No matter what side of the aisle you're on or if you even care, I just want to encourage you to limit yourself from, from people who are just making you scared all the time. Just, just want to challenge you. Also, I would also warn you of doomsday preachers. Same thing. People that are all, always the world's falling apart or doomsday people, people that just always think everything's unraveling all the time. And limit yourself up from the exposure of hanging out with people who are just always negative and just make you scared all the time. Now, if you are that person, you say, you're kidding me, you literally just told my kids not to call me. You know, you just told my, right? <laughs> right. If you are that person, I wanna challenge you on this to go back in your own history and figure out where you got that from. Because I promise you, somewhere in your history, you were heavily influenced by someone who was also fearful. And so, and replace that with faith. Fill your mind with positive preachers, positive authors, positive TV shows and movies that, that fill you with faith, that are redemptive in nature, because God does have a plan for your life and he doesn't want you to be so filled. See, here's the thing, if you're filled with fear, you can't have faith and fear at the same time. You're gonna be one gear or the other. It's not, it's not both, you see either you're full of faith or full of fear, I wanna encourage you that it's, it's like a car, when you put it in reverse or drive, you can't do both of those at the same time. I heard a message from my son, Mason, this last Sunday night, he said that, so I'm quoting my son. It's really true. You can't have faith and you can't have fear at the same time. It's one or the other. Choose faith today, don't choose fear. So I just wanted to quote that very popular preacher and theologian, Mason Cornelius. So, <laughs> stay away from people who appeal to your fear and hang with people who appeal to your faith. Does that make sense? So right now, listen in a positive way. Instead of writing down negative people, right? don't do that. Please don't do that. Why don't you write down three people that just appeal to your faith? Just, just that they just fill you up. You're like, man, every time I'm around them, I just feel invigorated and ready to just take on life. Name three people right now, and you're like, you may know them personally, you may not. They just may influence you somehow. Write their names down and just make an effort to follow them and to pursue them, to be connected with them, just to hear uh, what they have to say. I want to encourage you. Certain preachers do that for me, uh, certain authors. Um, and so I just want to encourage you. I, I try to go to websites that aren't all about fear and doom, but, but websites that encourage me, build me up, teach me new skills to be better at what I do. And so I want to encourage you to do the same thing. So limit negative skies, fall in thinking, and fill your mind with the right thoughts, therefore being around the right people. This one may surprise you next, I wanna say, but this has a lot to do with us being anxious. I wanna challenge you, number four, to reduce debt. This is the third service I've missed that scripture. Let me back up. Matthew chapter 6, 34 says this. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So that's why I was encouraging you not to be filled with negative thinking, they're always telling you about tomorrow's gonna be horrible and the whole world's coming to an end, that's ridiculous. And first of all, they don't know the future, so how can they dictate that? So, but number four, reduce debt. Look at Proverbs 22 says, the rich rules over the poor, the borrower is a slave of the lender. I don't know about you, but I'm not pro-slavery. I don't want any being, anybody being enslaved. You know, we used to call it slavery, today they call it human trafficking, it's the same thing, it's slavery. Why in the world, if we're so against slavery and human trafficking as we clearly should be, why would we then choose to enslave ourselves with too much debt? So I wanna encourage you, don't do that. It just hurts you. I wanna even go a step further. It's, you know, the, it's popular to say things like, you know, pay off that debt, that's a good thing. And I agree with all that, but let me just get real practical with it for a second too, because sometimes this step may seem a bit embarrassing. We need to get over that. There is nothing wrong with downsizing. See, in today's world, all the preachers are, you know, oh, it's just faith and get that bigger house and bigger car and this and that. And it's like, yeah, that's great if you can afford it, but if you can't afford it, then don't get a bigger house and don't get a new car. And, you know, don't buy a bigger boat. Don't even buy a boat if you can. You know, like, in other words, why don't you downsize if, if you need to? If you don't need to, I'm not suggesting you do it just to do it. But my point is, is that if you are always worried about money, that means you've over-indebted yourself. And so I would encourage you to, to get out of debt. I mean, Dave Ramsey goes as far as to get out of all debt other than a mortgage, which is great. If you can do it, I think it's great. But if, even if it just money's on your mind all the time, you may be driving a little too much car, living in a little too much house, 
wearing a little too nice clothes. In other words, I'm all for, I hope you have all that and more. Just want you to have it when you can afford it so you're not worried about money all the time. Life doesn't consist of things. It just doesn't. Just, just make sure you own your stuff and your stuff doesn't own you. And so I just want to encourage you, it's okay to move from a larger house to a smaller house. It's okay to go trade in the newer car for a cheaper car so you have a less of a car payment. But pastor, if I do that, I'm going to lose money. Yeah, you own a car. You're already losing money. Cars are a losing proposition to begin with. You're already losing money because they break down. I've never seen a car really go up in value. That doesn't happen unless you hold on to it for 100 years and never drive it. But most cars you know, lose value. And so you say, well, but I'm going to lose value if I go trade it in because I just bought it a year ago, but I really can't afford the payment. Go ahead and trade it in and lose the value because right now you're losing, you're losing money and sleep. I'd rather you just lose a little bit more money. And so that way you're not anxious because of overpurchasing. I've done it before. I'm sure you've done it as well. It's very easy to do. You know, the average American has $38,000 in debt that's not a mortgage. That's student debt, credit cards. We're just getting ourselves in trouble, guys. Life is too short to be spending all your paycheck just on debt reduction. And so pay it off, get rid of it, downsize if you have to. This could be really freeing. I'm not hearing any amens right now, but I'm telling you this works, guys. It can set you free. My job is to tell you the truth. I'm trying to tell you the truth. It really does work. So you're like, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Reduce your debt. Here's another big one. If you want to quit being anxious all the time, slow down. Just slow down. That may seem really simple, but, but slow down because one of the reasons we're anxious is we're overscheduling our lives. We're just doing too much. You got your kids in three sports and you know, they're, you know, somehow working piano into that and, you know, then throwing in some ballet. I mean, it's like, this is ridiculous. And so, you know, pick a sport. Let's do one, you know, let's do that well, you know? And so I just want to encourage you, uh, you know, put like one sport a season or whatever. I'm not here to parent your kid. I'm just telling you that oftentimes we're over, not only we overschedule, then we overschedule our kids and we're just, it's, we're just slamming ourselves, our schedules. Then we wonder why we're stressed. Oh, I got to be here on Tuesday and then Wednesday I got to be here and then Thursday I got this meeting and then Friday I got this, and then Saturday. I mean, oh my goodness, slow down. It's worth it. It really is. It's okay to say no. It is. And so don't be afraid of that word. It's not a bad word. It says in Psalms 127, it's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know he enjoys giving rest to those he loves? God wants you to be rested. In fact, just a, a case in point, God created the whole world in six days, then he rested. So if God himself rested, you know, he even put that we're supposed to keep the Sabbath holy. That means set it apart, have one day of the week that you worship me and rest is what he says in scripture. He says, no one should work on that day. And so, you know, for me, this isn't my Sabbath. I love Sundays, but you know, my, I'm not resting today at all, right? So I have a different day of rest, but the principle still applies. And so I've learned to protect and guard my day of rest. It's a really big deal. So if you, if you say, well, you know, Saturday's my day off. And so I run errands and I mow the lawn and I wash the car, do all that another day. Because then you're, you're working harder than you do when you go to work. And so instead, you've got to have a, a true day of rest. And so I want to challenge you to guard it. If you need to mow your lawn, you normally do it on Saturdays, do it Thursday night. Do it, just get home a little, you know, a little earlier or even just work a little later and, and just do it so that Saturday when it gets here, you don't have anything to do. You can truly rest and just relax and enjoy your kids. I'll never forget when, when Mason was really little and uh, we didn't have any other kids yet, it was just Mason at the time. He was in a little diaper and he was, I was mowing the lawn and he was up in the window in his little diaper. Somehow he'd figured out dad was outside and he'd plaster himself against the window watching me and he was calling, I just, I could see him. I couldn't hear him because I was the mower, but I see him going, daddy, daddy. And I was just like, and as I'm mowing, I'm like, what am I doing? This is my day off. My son's begging to be with me. So I was like, man, I'm gonna forget this lawn and go spend time with my family. And that was the day I said, I'm done with this. I wanna give that day to him. So it's a big deal. And parents, you blink and that little one is big. Trust me, trust me. You blink and they're big. Don't waste those times. And so I wish I could go back to that. Eh, not really. Anyways. <laughs> But you want to spend that time with your kids while you got them because you don't know how long you got them. Does that make sense? And so it's really, it's fun. I actually have a lot of fun with my boys under older too. But I would just encourage you with this, that if you want to prioritize your family, then prioritize your family. 
I mean, that just means you gotta mess with your schedule. You're gonna have to adjust things and say no. And so don't be afraid to do that. Slow down, it's really a big deal that we learn to do this. Guard that day off, guard that time, it's, it's critical. So now for those of you who are just consumed with worry, I'm gonna make, get real practical with you today because I think all of us have some worries that, that tend, to, tend to hang out a long time. I wanna challenge you to do this this week. I wanna challenge you to get a bag, just like a lunch bag, write the word worry on it. And do this in your kitchen. This is a great place. You know why you should do it in the kitchen? Because when you worry, you go eat, don't you? Let's not lie, right? <laughs> Thank God for Bluebell. Okay. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to get a bag, write worry on it. Okay. Oh, I'm really bad at this. Okay, there we go. And so, and then what, whatever's consuming you, write it down. So I just wrote job. Maybe you're concerned about your job. Am I going to have this job next year? The economy, this and that. Things are changing in my industry, whatever. Whatever you're worried about, maybe your boss is on you or you had to join a new team, you're not crazy about them or they're not crazy about you or whatever, right? So you're concerned about your job. Rather than worrying about it all the time, write it down and lift it up to God and say, God, I'm gonna cast this anxiety, this worry upon you. So Lord, I give you this worry now and I, I trust that you know what needs to happen here, so please help me in my job. Doesn't mean we don't do our part to work hard and all those things, but Lord, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna do my best and not worry about it. And once you've prayed about it, put it in the worry jar or the worry bag. And then if you get worried later about it, you start thinking about it, you're like, oh, it's on my mind. Then go back to the bag, pull it back out, right? Pray about it again, then put it back in. Eventually, when you're worried about something, you're gonna stop and go, you know, well, I'm good. I already gave that to God. I have the evidence in the kitchen. God has it. I don't need to go back and grab that again. How many of you guys have a worry that just consumes you and it's been something that's like your greatest fear, like something you're like, oh, my greatest fear, it's always on my mind, or, or, or every once in a while it comes up and it's just something I, I'm concerned about. How many of you guys have a greatest fear? Raise your hand if you do. Something you're just like, my greatest fear, just, oh gosh, if this happened, I don't know what I'd do, right? We all have something like that. Hold your hand up if you've had that fear for more than one year. Hold your hand up if you've had that multiple years, you've had that fear. Okay, keep your hand up. Now let me just ask you this question. So how many years has it been and it's never happened? <laughs> Isn't that good? Because we're like, how many years? Have I been worried about this and it's just never happened? And so I just wanna encourage you, it's not gonna happen. It's like the Texan Super Bowl, not gonna happen. <laughs> just get that in your head, it's okay. Sorry, I just had to go there. So, no, just wanna encourage you though, don't be consumed and worried and fret and stressful about something that's probably never really gonna happen. Don't sweat it, don't worry about it. If you work for the Texans, I was just kidding. I do believe, kind of, okay. <laughs> Reduce debt, slow down and give your worries truly to God. This last one is so important because I think we forget that God really is there for us. It says in Psalms 34, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. Isn't that good? It's so simple, but it's so powerful. Can I tell you what worry is really a sign of? It's really a sign of prayerlessness. That's what it's really about. Because if we're a prayerful person, you're not going to be worried. You're going to go to God in prayer. He says this, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Look at Psalms 22. It says, our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were saved. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. So if God always took care of all the believers before us, why is he suddenly going to stop taking care of you? He's got us. He can handle it, whatever it is. One of the advantages of having journals, that I, I write, write up my prayers to God, and one of the advantages of that is I have journals from, I mean, for, for forever ago. I've got, well, I was 13 years old when I started journaling. So I've got all these, these wire-bound journals. What's great about them is so I'll go back and just pull one from 10 years ago and open it up and see what my greatest concern was, and I can find six months later, or a year later, where it was solved. And it's like, oh yeah, I was really worried about that, and then the God came through here, and I was really worried about that, and, that God came through here, and I was worried about this, and then God did that, and then and I was worried about that, and then God, I have a timeline of prayer answered, prayer answered, prayer answered. Why would that stop now? If I'm concerned today, pray so that God will then answer. He comes through for you and me. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. George Moeller Messina was one of Napoleon's generals. They showed up one morning, a Sunday morning, with 18,000 troops to attack a small Austrian town. 
This is true history. That small Austrian town, the elders gathered. As soon as they saw it became daylight, they saw this horde of soldiers and realized it must have been one of Napoleon's armies coming to destroy them. As the town elders gathered together quickly to decide what to do, essentially their city council, they're trying to figure out what to do. One of the men on that council was the pastor of the local church in that city. And as they were just, frankly, preparing to die, preparing to surrender themselves in the hopes that they could just become their slaves and not be killed, the town pastor said, before we do that, it's Easter morning. I feel like if this is really all we're looking at doing, can we at least have church first? And they're like, why? We're just, and he's like, no, this is why we need to have church. So I say we have church. It's, what can it hurt? I mean, might as well call out to God. So he goes to the church, and that morning he rang the bell to say church was happening that morning. And as he rang the bell, what he didn't know was that all those French soldiers thought that that bell ringing meant that the Austrian army was coming, and they all scattered when you choose to go to God in his house, he will scatter your enemies. He will take care of things for you. Put him first. Depend upon him. Let's pray. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, will this be your battlefield today? Will you choose to worship him? Will you choose to trust in him? Will you choose, choose to trust your fears, your anxieties, your worries? He's got you. He's got it. He knows. He's aware what's going on in your marriage. He knows what's happening in your finances. He understands and knows what's going on with your child. He's aware of your health issue. He knows of your concerns. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, would you just turn that over to God today? Will you give that worry, that concern, that fear to him and just tell the Lord, I trust you, God. I don't know the outcome, but you do. And I trust my life in your hands. You have a purpose and a plan for my life, and it's a plan to prosper me, not to harm me. You will bless me. I know you will, Lord. I trust in you. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you've never received Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior, to be honest with you, if you don't know Christ, I don't know how you do life. I, I honestly do feel bad for you if you don't know Jesus, because you don't have an answer, and you don't have anyone to call upon, and you are on your own, but you don't have to be. If you'll call out to the Lord, he will answer your prayer. He will bring Christ to you. See, Jesus died on the cross for you. He paid the price for your sins and for mine. And since we have done wrong, we don't get to go into heaven because you gotta be perfect to get there. Or, or you can go in on Christ's record, his sinless, stainless, perfect record. Why don't you receive what he's done for you he went to the cross, he died a criminal's death, yet he had committed no crimes against God or humanity. He died for our crimes, for our sins. Then he rose again, proving that he's God. Now he waits for you to receive him. You can pray this very simple prayer. You can receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. It's personal. Right now, pray this prayer with us. You can say, dear Jesus, I realize I need you. I believe you died for me. I believe you paid the price for my sin. And I believe you rose again. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I repent of my sins. I put you in first place. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your name we pray. Amen. Isn't God good? His word is so...